Are you embarrassed or just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I thought you were looking for the office when I pointed to you across the hall. I didn't realize you were looking for the meeting. They can all go to the street. One. Oh, street light. Sorry. Street light. Cannot. I'll tell you that. When you get to that one, I'll tell you. All right. We got, you ready? It's the time. Wait. Well, actually, you've got to make all the motions. I'm second. I mean, I'm. Oh, yeah. We'll figure it out. All right, we're ready. Morning. It is the appointed time, as far as we know, and uh, for the uh, Management and Internal Services Committee for November 12, 2019. Called me to order. If you would all please bow your heads for a moment of silence while we ha or for a moment while we uh, have an invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to do the business of the people of this beautiful, wonderful community. Thank you for the many blessings you have graced upon us. We ask that your thought, your uh, intentions be with us in our thoughts, our actions, our words, and our deeds. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Flag. United States. Republic. <laughs> Good morning. Let the record show that we uh, are short uh, one committee member today, but we do still have a quorum, with two out of three here. Um, may I have a motion for approval of our previous minutes from October? Motion. Approve. And as chairman, I'll second that. Um, we have no presentations that I can see. I apologize. Well, let's, are there any adjustments to the agenda? And in that case, we have no presentations. Um, and we do not have an item on the consent. We'll move straight into the debate and new business. The uh, first item is a small business Saturday proclamation that Columbia County Chamber of Commerce desires to proclaim November 30th, 2019, a Small Business Saturday in Columbia County, in recognition of the vast number of small businesses. Motion to this. These go to the consent agenda. Motion to, to consent. consent. You can send it wherever you want. You're the commissioner. Well, I just wanted to make sure I didn't screw it. Second up. to consent. We don't have our act together this morning. Next, uh, service agreements. The next items are service agreements for the Mosaic Center and the Junior League of Augusta coming from Commissioner's Discretionary Funds. Staff recommends approval of the service agreement. Those amounts are in your work. Motion to consent. Second. Group insurance. Family member. The uh, ne next item is concerns the successful renewal negotiation for Cigna employee benefit products for 2020. Uh, these products are the standard life insurance, uh, voluntary life insurance, employee short and long-term disability benefits, um, and the uh, renew renewal negotiations came out with no uh, rate increase for an additional 24-month period. Uh, the count, the amount that the county pays, the thirty-eight thousand four hundred annually, remains the same, and the remaining benefits, which are paid by the employees, also remain. So I apologize. It says you're twelve month, but you said twenty-four. Did you mean to say twenty-four? Uh, Do we have, hold those rates for two years? I have twenty-four. Twenty-four or twelve. Oh, with the renewal is twenty-four. So the rate holds through the renewal. Fantastic. Motion to consent. Second. Great work. Thank you. Uh, next, we move into internal services. We have one item. Yes, this item is the renewal <coughs> of the contract for misdemeanor probation services for our ma magistrate court. 
contract is with CSRA Probation Services for a one-year term, January 1, 2020 through December 31st, 2020, and it is at no cost to the county. Staff recommends approval. Motion to consent. Fees paid 100% by offender. Second. And technologies. Blanchard. Uh, first item is for an agreement with Insperity for the implementation of TimeStar software. Uh, right now, the county is predominantly using paper time cards for all of its employees. Fire Rescue is different. They've been using uh, Insperity, uh, TimeStar software from Insperity uh, since 2012. Uh, it's worked flawlessly for them. It integrates with our um, enterprise resource planning system, which you heard about before. Um, Sheriff's Office expressed interest in moving to it, and so we, we explored that. It looks like an ideal option for them because it handles the uh, creative scheduling that they have to do with all the shift work uh, that the Sheriff's Office does. Um, we're also looking at this as something that we can do for the entire county in the future. Um, but the cost for this initial project is 17500 of which uh, IT is paying the lion's share and the Sheriff's Office is contributing. And then once it goes live early next year, Sheriff's Office will take over. Staff recommends approval. Motion to consent. Uh, the only question I have, uh, so we're currently using paper cards still? Uh, most of our employees are still filling out paper time cards, yes, sir. With, without, I apologize that I didn't search this one enough. Did, is it a virtual time clock now? Is it a computer-based or is it an actual time clock, like an old-fashioned time clock that uses a virtual card? It's not a time clock. Um, we're- Time-keeping system. It's just a time-keeping system, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Second. All right. Next item is the uh, purchase of an IBM V7000 storage device. Uh, this device is uh, really one of the, the critical pieces of technology that we use. Uh, it's about, it's coming up on five years old. IBM has recommended a replacement. Um, we already have an agreement with Mainline Information Systems, uh, who we'd be purchasing it from. The overall cost of this device is $151,000 um, and some change, uh, plus an additional uh, 25750 for installation, configuration, and migration of our content. Um, in essence, this is going to bring us up to a more modern platform with solid-state hard drives, uh, which are the uh, much better platform than what we have right now, much more efficient. We do not currently have F SSDs. Not in higher, the, it says higher capacity, but what we have now or not? Or not in that Maybe device. a mix? We have a mix of, uh, in, in different devices right now. Yes. Um, but this one will be on SSDs. Um, it's a much better solution, and the yearly cost is going to be about the same when you break down uh, the purchase that we have and, and maintenance for the next three years, because it, it includes three years of 24-7 on-site maintenance. Staff recommends approval. Motion to consent. Second. All right. Next item is an agreement with VC3 uh, for the technology services. Um, this project satisfies a number of goals that we have for advancing technology in the county. Um, we're currently on an older version of SharePoint. Uh, that's what we use for our intranet. So we'll be moving forward with a, a new and improved version of that with their assistance. Uh, we also will be automating forms. That's a project I've wanted to pursue for a while uh, to move us from a mixture of forms in Adobe, Word, Excel to a common platform, basically establish the expertise within IT to be able that going forward. Um, there's also a provision in the second year for us to start using a business intelligence software really to start mining the data that we've been capturing in our databases, uh, to pull out budget information, to have more accurate uh, reports uh, that are centrally located. And then uh, finally they'll be able to support us as we move forward with uh, other cloud-based technologies like OneDrive and Office 365. Um, the cost of the implementation is uh, uh, technically, it's it's fifty two thousand. Uh, we were took very strong stance in negotiating and brought them down to thirty four, um, and it will there will be an ongoing fee of thirty two thousand per year. Um, that's based on the number of employees that are using SharePoint. Staff recommends approval. Motion to consent. Second. Great deal. Way to. All right. The next item is agreement for Dell equipment and services. We usually bring an item before you each year that uh, has to do with the replacement of our existing equipment. Uh, we're making that a little bit more um, uh, grandiose or a little bit more uh, long-standing. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
by bringing this one with Dell for their equipment and services. Dell has a number of other services that are not typically included in our uh, just life cycle replacements. Uh, we want to be able to take advantage of those, including purchasing of storage devices, servers, and things like that from Dell. Um, so this agreement's been negotiated. There's not a fixed dollar amount. This is just uh, additional uh, discounted pricing for us for whatever we purchase with them. So it's a two-year agreement with three one-year renewals. Um, staff recommends approval. Motion to consent. Second. And the final item that I have for you today is an agreement between uh, Gondi County uh, and Planners Communications. Uh, Planners Communications has recently um, received a, a agreement with or signed an agreement with Grovetown to provide them with additional services, and they need our support in order to do that. So, what this agreement does is it provides um, links among the different public safety offices in Grovetown, and also links them back to us. So they'll have connectivity among their different offices. Um, the cost at, uh, or what they'll be paying for us at contract signing is 123100 and then they'll be paying us uh, monthly over the course of the next 20 years. So the overall aggregate amount of this project is 482000 25 and 60. Motion to consent. Can you define dark fiber for me? Fiber that's not lit. It's, it's fiber Dormant. that's just sitting in the ground. Dormant, just waiting to be right. used. So as, as opposed to a lit service, where we would take our equipment and light it and provide the service across the fiber. Mm -hmm. Fiber that's sitting there. So someone can come along and lease it and then use their own equipment and light it themselves. A lot of that's a not an uncommon way of doing it. No, I mean that was that was part of the original model. I just didn't know the term. Thank you. Second. Add something to that. Yes, that was perfect. <laughs> Simple, I could understand it. Thank you. <laughs> Let's not go any farther down that rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Blanchard. Um, any other items to be addressed before we move into reports? Mr. Chairman, I just want to I want to clarify that. Obviously, I'll explain the uh, fiber better. So, um, <laughs> the, 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 the contract was for an additional year. Those rates are locked in for two. Duly noted. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so we'll go into uh, any legal matters there, Mr. Attorney. Bill today. Staff report. Um, county Administrator. The first uh, <coughs> report are personnel savings. Uh, personnel savings to date are $477,505, far exceeding our goal of $300,000. Um, <coughs> attached to this uh, item is a spreadsheet that shows the savings breakdown by department and turnover percent the month of September. 1.26%. County of our size, this is actually the month of October. Eating the way we are. Um, a lot of competition for talent right now. So there is. We're very, very lucky to keep them. Double edged sword. Internal services. Ms. Reese. <clears throat> the first report I have for you is the year-to-date budget report. This is for the month ended October 31st, <clears throat> and all departments and funds are currently operating within the parameters of the Questions? Questions. Nothing from the accountant, then I'm good. The My favorite report, but although it's not as entertaining as it used to be. Yes, the next item is a uh, <clears throat> sales tax report. This is through the month of September. We collected not quite $2 million that month, and our collections <coughs> have seen an annualized percentage of 8.3%. Far better than previous yes. years. Investment, ma'am. The last item is just the investment report for your information. Thank you very much. Take all that for information. Any comments from the commissioner? No, sir. Any comments from the other commissioners? Any comments from the public regarding this committee? Seeing none, uh, we do have one item on executive session with your approval. We'll go ahead and move that forward to the full commission. Motion to move to the full commission for their executive um, session. Second and so moved. 
no other business before this committee, we'll stand adjourned. What time would you like to start, ma'am? Five minutes. Is that enough, Patrice? Five minutes. So at 8.50, we will begin public services.
Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome to the committee meeting of the Development Engineering Services Committee. I am District 1 Commissioner Connie Malier, the chair of this committee. Uh, we have uh, two of the three commissioners here, so we do have a quorum. We have already um, had our invocation and pledge, and um, would like to call for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. Thank you. Um, do we have any changes to the agenda? Thank you. Um, approval of this agenda? We need a motion. Your discretion, ma'am. We're approving the agenda, moving on as, as stated. Um, do we have any public presentations? Having none, um, let's, and nothing on our consent agenda, let's move directly into debate. Our new business, we'll start with uh, Matt Schlopter. Tell us what you have on your list today. Thank you, ma'am. First one I have for you is Resolution 1942. This is a uh, conveyance of property and an inter intergovernmental agreement with the city of Harlem. It says for the Harlem Library, but this actually is for the Harlem Theater. Library property has been transferred to us already. This is the theater parcel itself and the parking lot beside the theater. Uh, Mr. Driver prepared this for us, and staff has recommended approval of this intergovernmental agreement. Okay. Um, so we're, I'm sorry, I, I didn't. But they, the agreement is basically the building was Harlem's. The, they're, right. they gave, they're giving all that and, to us. And, and we want to do some some work. And done it. Right. So we did the million dollar upgrade to the theater. You know, we redid the inside, put the new face on it. Uh, this government, intergovernment agreement basically says they give us the property. They get the building to you. They were, they were responsible for maintenance, upkeep, but it's our building. So we're taking the building. I didn't realize that. Okay. It's our building, but they have full use of it. They have to repair it, maintain it. Um, they do have an option to buy it from us in the future for the million dollars we spent on the project. So, Chris, anything else? Is there a sunset on this, or is it for there a certain number of years? There is a sunset, and I forget the actual terms of it. 30, 50 years? 50 years. 50 years. State law requires a 50-year maximum on an agreement. It's 50 years. Okay. I won't be here if it comes back up. <laughs> oh, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> um, can this, I guess this can be a consent item. Can be. Moved consent. All right, so moved. Next one I have for you is a change order for Patriots Park. This is change order number four. This is a, a completion date change order from September 25th to October 25th. This is basically an extension for um, adverse weather days and some issues we had with Georgia Power. Georgia Power was not under the direction of Beams. They were working as a, their own contractor. They delayed Beams as well. No money involved here. It's just a change in, in substantial completion date to October 25th. Staff recommends approval. Darn contractors. Darn contractors. Always, let's just blame it on Georgia Power. Move to approve. Uh, debate. 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 It, can go to, it can go either. It can go to consent. consent or debate. I'm sorry, consent. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That'll be fine. So move to consent. What's next? Next one I have for you is a gaslight extension contract. This is for the Columbia County Performing Arts Center. This is a contract to allow Atlanta Gas Light to bring gas to the project. There is no cost to the county for this. Staff recommends approval. Consent. So moved. All right, this one is, this one's, we got a little more information I need to tell you. This is for a change order for the Plaza Parking Garage. Um, when we originally started this project, we were partnering with Maybaum. They had an option to buy the land around. <coughs> um, we designed the RFP knowing that we had a basically a postage stamp piece of land surrounded by a private property. The RFP asked for the construction of a parking deck and a parking deck alone. Um, Maybaum was going to build the parking lots around it. They were going to build the roads to it. They were going to have the storm infrastructure. None of that was included in the original RFP for the design build contract. Um, we all know that our plan changed out there. We are not, uh, we do not have a contract with Maybaum right now. So now we have to get roads to the, ro to the parking deck. We also have to get our storm lines to the parking deck. So change order for, this is a three-part change order. That includes the biggest chunk of it. That's for the asphalt paving, curb to enter and exit the storm, uh, exit the deck, storm water lines connecting to the existing storm system and the fill of a pond. There was a pond on the property Maybaum was going to purchase from us. They were gonna fill that, that pond. Um, since they did not purchase the land, we now have to fill the pond to get connectivity to our parking deck. That's one piece of it. Uh, also in the RFP, we did not require a payment performance bond. We do want it. We want it, we gotta pay for it. We don't want it, we don't have to pay for it, but it's up to us. Staff wants the performance bond. 
Then the other one is unsuitable soils. So our contract actually states that if we are unforeseen conditions found, that we are required to endure the cost of those unforeseen conditions. When the soil borings came back on the site, it, our PSI was 2,500 PSI, versus 4,000 we were hoping for. The size of the footers tripled. That was something that, that was not made available to anybody that put a package together for us. It's found after the contract was awarded, a Clifton went out and did the soil borings. Soils are, are, are not good. The size of the footers have to triple in size. So the $45,000 there is to pay for the additional concrete to make those footers three times larger than they would have been originally. So one of these is, is a change in the, in the contract itself because of the unforeseen conditions. The other two are um, things that were left out of the RFQ, one for the performance bond, payment bond, and then one for the roads and the storm system and the pond filling to get to the parking deck. Happy to answer any questions. I know there's a lot of information I threw at you at one time, but I'll be happy to answer questions. We are taking all three as one motion. That's correct. It ends up being $294,566.90. Grand total for all of those. The vast majority of it is the roads, the storm line, and filling that pond in. Um, 45000 is for the footers, and then 34, I forget, I don't know the actual numbers. 45000 for the foundation. Performance and payment bond is 39984 and then the all the additional site work on the site outside of the parking deck is 209582 I wish I could poke holes in it, but think, but it it is, uh, sir. Thank you. Uh, my only question would be, and, and as you just said, you can't poke holes in it. I am at a disadvantage. Knowledge of construction between the two people, three people here up here. Um, uh, the footing, or the footers, the PSI test, is there not any stronger estimate based on what has already been built on that immediate parcel that would have led us to believe that it was going to be as soft as it is? Or, I mean, I guess, does it vary that much, uh, give or take a couple Customarily hundred feet? The, the price is given based on the owner, which would be us, taking responsibility for whatever is <clears throat> beneath the soil. So you go in knowing there could be a rock, there could be any number of things, as we saw at the Performing Arts Center, you know, if there's water, there's rocks, whatever, you, right. the owner takes responsibility. I'm just saying we estimated 4,000. Was that what we had with the other construction on that site? And so that's why we assumed 4,000? Or Site changes dramatically from spot to spot. At, okay. at the PAC, we have spots for the PAC. We have uh, piling underneath the, the building holding the building up. Right beside the building, we had to blast rock to be able to lay our sewer line. So it changes right. literally from 10 feet over here to 20 feet over here. It completely changes. Um, Okay, I mean, that, that, that makes sense. In the original contract, we had it in there that the contractor takes full responsibility of everything below site, and they refuse to sign the contract because they're, nobody's going to do that. If they do do it, they're going <coughs> to add a whole lot of money to unforeseen conditions, and when they don't find them, they make a, a windfall of money. Backed out, came back and said, if it's bad, we'll pay for it. Now, I, and I understand that. I, I just was curious about the PSI of the soil, but I did watch Mr. Blanding's build some pools in the past. Old movie buffs, Cary Grant. Same same thing happened. He watched a little HGTV. So. Um, oh. so any all of that to say, motion to approve, to debate. To debate. Um, what is um, how many parking spots do we have in this? Eighty-one to eighty. So we're still holding holding, the, and they're good size. We drive some bourbons out here. No little car spots. On the first floor, there are some compact spots just because of the slopes and stuff. But once you get past that first deck, and get, it's, it's standard parking spots. We looked at looked at knocking six inches off each one to see if we could gain more, but we thought that's a horrible idea. So right. they're standard nine by eighteen parking. Very good. And you uh, talked about the the civil changes and other folks. You know uh, that the original price for the parking deck was just the deck, nothing around it that doesn't include landscaping or any of that nothing just the concrete parking deck basically we we build up that piece of property that we designated for that parking deck it's all but the 10 foot around it for fire code is parking deck we, we used maximized to every piece of that piece of property we could how many levels four four and that was not an rfp correct that was it was an rfp, RFQ? 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 for design build 
Oh, RFP, request for proposal for design build contract. Oh, it's design, okay. But it was, I thought that was the one where we, we wanted the number of spaces we could get for the requested amount of money as opposed to give exactly. us a bid what for what exactly we're asking we did. for. Okay. I thought, we I thought had that had another term other than RFP. I thought it was an design RFP. design bill, but it was proposals for design bill contracts. Okay. So we told them we, we had a minimum number of 200 spaces required, a maximum of $4 million. Tell us what you can do. Gotcha. And then we evaluated based on every proposal we got. Okay. Clifton pr proposed 280, I believe. I, I might be off a number two there, I believe. Allen, 250 something. I don't know if you remember that one off the top of your head. And one company came in and said, You can't do it with the money you have. There's no way to do 200 spaces for the money you have. So we had a complete gamut. Okay. Well, my thoughts for that were because of the amount. I just figured for that large of an amount, um, something that deserved to be voted on by the whole commission as a all right, we have a motion to move to the questions. debate agenda, and I will second that, and we will take that up at the next commission meeting. What do you have next, Mr. <clears throat> Schechter? Uh, another change order. This is for the Performing Arts Center. So this has got five pieces of this change order. Um, one is to provide piping for water-cooled ice makers, enabling to be cooled more economically. So we're going to have a lot of ice makers in this facility, obviously. We have uh, several session stands, um, basically it was looked at if we put in regular plug-in ice, ma ice machines, they generate heat. That's, that's what happens. Ice makers generate heat. So you got to have a lot of HVAC to keep that heat in that room out. Or we can tie into our water chiller that's there for the whole building. So we'll pay an extra 25 ish thousand dollars to convert to water-cooled ice makers versus regular air-cooled. That will save us money in the long run. Next one is the rerouting of storm and wastewater piping around areas that are noise critical space in the auditorium. So this is actually piping in the building, not I says storm water, but it's roof drains. Um, I don't know if you call it acoustician. I don't know what you call his name, but acoustic. I was close. <laughs> you put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. I did. <laughs> um, he looked at it and said, "There's a there's a chance that during a rain or somebody flushes a toilet." It, you could hear it inside the auditorium. This will reroute some of that piping. Better to fix it now than later. Correct. Um, the next one is providing data points for HVAC units. So basically, this is just sensors that are sending back data, what's going in the building, to our central system. So maintenance department gets notifications of what's going on without having to actually be there. So if there's a problem, we know it. We can fix it immediately. We don't find it halfway through a show, sitting there vacant for three or four days. We know there's a problem. We can address it without having to have somebody in there. And that was not part of the original design? There was some in there, but we asked for more. We looked at the system, and we asked to, to provide a lot more. Um, next one is some electrical and mechanical systems for room 305. So this is a, a security monitoring room uh, that's in there. Basically, our camera system will allow, come back to that one point, the, the sheriff's office, private security, whoever we have working the event has the ability to see all of our cameras in that room. Um, so it would be used for every event, but it does give us the ability to have a security room in the building. So the room is there. This is to provide some electrical and mechanical systems in that room. Then the additional, the last one is to provide an additional IT rack in Office Suite 125. Um, we do have mechanical rooms to provide some IT rack mounted space, help them with their system work better, prevent long runs. We've added this additional rack, better accessibility for parts of the building so we have 100 foot runs of our, our cable I think that's 100 foot Sean Sean's here 100 foot so we try to it makes it better a better robust system less fail points shorter runs so all that amounts to $75,721.57 um, will not be the last thing we're coming we actually are working on them now we're just not ready for zoom does this affect our time? <clears throat> this does not. No additional contract time for this. We're still in August? That's our goal. We, our goal to have substantial completion around August, but we don't open the building to the public until later. I wish I could poke holes in it, but these numbers are uh, they're pretty pretty dead on. So do I hear a motion? Yeah, a motion to consent. Motion to consent. Thank you. All right, that passes. Next, engineering services. Yes, ma'am. We have a proposed, 
Post safety light for our reform at Blanchard Road. This is our Georgia Power contract uh, in the amount of $297.84 per year to add this light to this intersection. Staff recommends approval. So this is just street light. This is, street this is not a a street light. light. We are working the, the, the intersection plan right now that we've, we've shown you previously of putting in the, the turn lanes with the signal. That's coming here soon. I hope we can, we can start working on that. We're going to build that our in house. But this is to basically put a street light to light the intersection for the time being. Thank you for looking at that for the time being. Um, will there be a public comment period for the, the, the additional, you know, when we work on the roads? We don't have one planned, but if, if you desire to have one, we can have one planned. It's, it's expected to just be a standard. It'll be a T intersection. Traffic light, T intersection, right? Intersection. I mean, and, it's. I hate to say it's temporary, but it is temporary because we have we are having public comment periods for our big Herbert Farm project. We are at currently going through a value engineering on it. Uh, we sent a plan to the public. We got comments back. We're going back and addressing those comments as well as trying to get our costs down. That plan will then redo this intersection. Um, what we're doing today is not going to be completely throwaway. We'll be able to save some of it. But we will have a comment period for the public for that big plan. For the big one, okay. Correct. Long-term finish, they will get to comment on. This is just a band-aid to get us there. Good. Thank you for working on that. And the folks who live out there appreciate it as well. Got a lot of comments on that. Do I hear a motion? $297 a year. Moved to consent. So moved. Next we have, this is a public hearing on the proposed establishment of street light districts for Hidden Creek Section F and G, Merritt Point at Crawford Creek, Tudor Branch Section 8, Phase 3, Whispering Pines Section 3, and Willow Oak Village Phase 6. So we have received peti petitions from residents and developers and or developers, depending on the neighborhood. Uh, we have received, uh, we verified the signatures, we have provided a cost as well, and this, this time we'd like to open up to the public to comment and uh, for support. Uh, any kind of comments, anyway. So. Do we have any public here who would like to comment? Sir, approach the uh, approach the podium and tell us your name and address. If you'll please limit your comments to five minutes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chet Tony. I actually live in the Hidden Creek subdivision in Grovetown, and also I was one of the people who actually proposed, wrote the petition, and started it going. My concern is lately we had summer. I don't know if there's any people here from Hidden Creek. A couple break-ins. Streets are very dark. It's, we live in a new construction. They're building, and I think they're almost, you know, done building. So my biggest concern is the safety for my children and for myself. Uh, quite frankly, it's, um, it's very dark. You know, I think it'd be, a, uh, I don't know how much it's going to cost, but, you know, but we're willing to, you know, I guess $60 is what they told us a year. $60 per year. Be on your tax bill. Great, yeah. <laughs> But that's about it. That's my concern for my family and for the safety. And that's it. So you're in support of I am of this. total support of this. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Do we have any other comments? Sir, please approach the podium. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. Please state your name and address. Yes, yeah, sir. Xavier Lucky, address 8668 at Crenshaw Drive. Um, the only thing I'd like to know is... Um, the projected start point of uh, installing the lights. We actually don't install. Georgia Power does. We actually, if they approve this tonight and it goes through a couple readings because it is a, a tax that is imposed, so it'll take two readings. So in December, it gets the final approval. The contract will be signed. At that point, we hand it to Georgia Power and we're at their mercy. Um, Angela, have you been, have you had any kind of proposed timeline? Usually the holdup is getting the poles. When they order the poles, as soon as the poles are shipped, they, they install them. It's, it's getting the manufacturer to, to produce the poles and send them in. So from that point, everything is on Georgia Power. It is. It is. We And they'll maintain them. That we The money we pay is for them to maintain them. If it gets knocked down, they can put a new one up. The light goes out, they replace it. So basically, they are the, the gatekeepers when it comes to the lights. Okay. I was just uh, curious about when the start time, since I received that letter in the mail and right. got finna take it out to taxes, so I figured it was already approved. So it, this is the part of the approval process. Okay. So once right. it gets approved, we'll move on to the actual install part. Okay. Um, 
this is not a um, pre like question, but about road bumps. How, do, how, how does that work? Same process that you just went through, Miss Miss Graham over here. She can walk you right through it. It's a it's they get speed bumps in the neighborhood and all that. We do a study, and if the study comes back warranting the the speed humps, we will come back to commission, and you'll get another letter saying, "Hey, we're going to discuss it," and, and you'll get a chance to come up here and speak in for or against it, and the chance to decide. Okay, well, I'm for the street light. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank, thank you. you for your comments. Do we have any other public who would like to speak? Again, please state your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is James Hall, and I also live in the Hidden Creek area, um, 8656 Crenshaw Drive. And again, um, just a caveat on what he mentioned about the, the burglaries. Um, I have witnessed uh, on security cameras uh, late at night individuals you know, going from property to property, and that's my main concern as well. So I am fully uh, in favor of the street lights there. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Anybody like to speak against the proposal? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yes, sir. I am. I see one, two, three, four, five, ladder. six. I see six on Crenshaw. For the for talking about in yellow, Lindsmore yeah, section one. Yellow. Right. How did we determine the parameters of the placement hmm? uh, of the district? Uh, I mean, do the others already have? I mean, how do we draw this boundary as a? All based on petition. So when the neighbors come in, um, okay, Angela, you. Good morning. I'm really Good morning. Great at public speaking. <laughs> um, we actually determine the area based on the plat that's pulled in. Okay. Thank you for what? coming up to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sir, to answer your question, the actual overall cost is about fourteen thousand dollars for the first year, and a little over four thousand dollars to maintain them every year, and that'll be put up amongst all those homeowners, and it'll come out to about sixty dollars. Um, can this go to consent? As a t this as is a, a public hearing. There's no, nothing to be here. Just we need to get we're done. Oh, we that's right. We close the public hearing. Do you have any other questions? Any other comments? Thank you. And public hearing is closed. What do you have next, Mr. Sockter? I have resolution 1936, 37, 38, 39, and 40. This resolution are to establish streetlight districts in Hidden Creek, Section F and G. Barrett Point at Crawford Creek, Tudor Branch Section 8, Phase 3, Whispering Pine Section 3, and Willow Creek, Willow Oak Phase 6. Uh, we have had a public hearing. We did have three property owners speak in favor of the streetlight district. This time, staff has recommended approval of these resolutions as we'll need to go to debate for the two readings. That was my question. Thank you. Move to debate. Move to debate for the first reading. Thank you. Next. We have for you is an easement encroachment at 3964 Almond Drive. The property owner is looking <coughs> to install a, uh, a storage building in the rear of their property. We do have a 20-foot drainage utility easement on the rear. We do not have any facilities in that easement. We do have the easement, though, and staff sees no problem with allowing this encroachment agreement, and staff has recommended approval of this. And the agreement clearly establishes if we need to come back through, it is too bad. Ma'am. All right. Consent. So move Next. Step for you is a permanent ingress egress easement on Matheny Cut, parcel 073L171. Stormwater recently did some pond restoration behind these properties. Uh, we do have an access easement already on this property. However, there's a lot of trees on this access easement. Property owners agreed to give us another one where there are no trees. It's better access. Staff has recommended acceptance of this permanent ingress egress easement. Ben. So moved. Step for you is some. Uh, Permanent and temporary easements for stormwater maintenance. Uh, these are all donated to the county and staff has recommended approval. Consent. So moved. Next one I have for you is Marymont subdivision permanent and temporary easements for stormwater improvements. All of these were donated. Staff has recommended approval. Consent. So moved. 
next I have for you is our 2020 local maintenance improvement grant with DOT. This is uh, our application is due by December 31st to get our 2020 allocation for road improvements. That amount is $1,745,488.56. We are required to do at least 10% of county money to match that money. Uh, you do have a list here of the roads we are proposing to pave with that road, pave with that money. You'll see that it's well over the uh, 1.7 million plus the 10%. We do have some money in um, 60 cents loss that we'd like to get the roads paved. Happy to answer any questions. We give a very brief synopsis of, of what LMIG is and how we got this list. So um, LMIG is basically just GDOT money that is handed out to counties and it's based on a formula of population and road miles or road center line miles, not not wide road. So um, a dirt road gets the same credit as a, as a four lane highway does. Basically you take a, a, a formula of road miles and your population and it gets divided amongst <coughs> all the counties in Georgia. So that's pot of money, the pot of money changes every year based on collections. That's where our $1.7 came from. As far as where the list is derived from, this is a, uh, some of it's come from requests from the public. Staff always goes out and evaluates these roads before we just put them on here. These are roads that are in need of major repairs. You'll see that four of them are actually major collector roads or arterial roads. They have one subdivision that repair. Um, the water is not getting into the storm system because of the road being out of section, so we'll actually go in and completely rebuild those roads. That'll be a complete tear out and rebuild that entire neighborhood. The rest of them are continuations of projects we've started. We've, we've paved old, old Louisville Road, and, um, sorry, Louisville Road. Um, <coughs> in the past, we, we just want to keep paving that out until we get finished. Old Louisville Road, just roads are in need of repair. Owens Road is, is near the end of its useful life. If we don't do something quick, it's going to cost us a lot more money to do that one in the future. That's how we derive the list. Appreciate that. And I uh, wanted to note there, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, the, uh, most of our road paving comes from sales tax dollars, state funds, grants, this type of thing, not property taxes. That is correct. The only money we spend on roads for property taxes is, is uh, patching potholes and cutting grass. If it's resurfacing or overloading or widening, it's all sales tax dollars or grant money. Right, so when T-SPLOS comes back around, when TIA comes back around, y'all remember that. Um, moved to consent. Mo uh, so moved, next. Therefore, it's a change order for a, the Shallowford Place culvert and streammate restoration. Uh, we had to do a little more driveway than we expected to. It amounted to $479.63 to bring our total, total contract to $549,015.50. Staff is recommending approval of change order number one. I don't know, $400, that's a lot. Moved to consent. <laughs> you scared me there for a minute. Well, it's 400 but it's <laughs> half a million overall. So, over so moved, next. All right, this one's a long one. The next <clears> one here for you is acceptance of improvements for Hawks Branch Parkway Storm System, River Oaks Phase 1 Road Storm Water and Sanitary Sewer Systems, Lari Section 4 Storm Water and Sanitary Sewer Systems and Road, SRA Partners uh, plat for FHA Holdings for the sewer system. Gander Mountain Phase 2 easement plat for the water and sewer system. Kelly Branch sewer relocation plat for the sewer systems. And all these are contingent upon staff's approval of the final plat, as built and warranty deed, and the two year warranty period begins on the date of written acceptance of the as built drawings. Basically, this is stuff that's been built by private dollars. They are now deeding it to the county. It has been overseen by staff, inspected process of being completed and staff would recommend an acceptance of all of this. No pigs and pokes. We've looked at it. aware of. No. So once we accept this, this will be our property and we will be responsible for the <coughs> continuing maintenance That's correct. of these, these items. We have a motion? Consent. So moved. Development services. We have an alcohol beverage license for Speedy Mart, uh, doing business as Speedy Mart. Uh, they have applied for alcohol beverage license to sell beer and wine for off-premise consumption at 6697 Washington Road. We have received the uh, all required information. We have posted the notice um, on the property on as of October 23rd. And staff has recommended approval of the license at the December 3rd, 2019 board. 6697 Washington Road, landmark. Where is the speedy mark? We've been dreaming. 
What's Ben dreaming is way out there going towards the lake. Oh. No schools or churches or any. Is there any conflict? Anybody complained? Any public comment on that? Noted. Moved consent. Who next? There for you is an alcoholic beverage license for Earl One. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> they are doing business as the Mahatma Restaurant. Try. Um, they are located <coughs> at 4272 Washington Road. Uh, the applicant has provided all required information. Posted notice on the property as November 1st. Staff has recommended approval of the license December 3rd, 2019. Board of Health. Moved consent. So moved. Are there any other items, Doctor, from your I think I've done enough. presentation? Um, do we have any legal matters for this committee, Mr. Driver? Thank you. Staff reports. First report you have is the Development Services Monthly Report. Answer any questions? I'll have the answer, but Byron's here. Not the Double the residential over last year. Am I reading that right? I don't know where you see October 2019 is 86 compared to 18 was 40. Construction permit. Yeah. Thought it was slowing down. Here to date, it has. Over was you, on double. If you recall in the last couple of commission meetings, you've approved a whole lot of plats. Plats. Matter of fact, you just saw a lot of them here. That's opened up lots to allow the builders to ground running. We went through that long, wet, rainy winter, and it slowed down construction of, of land. Now that has passed, and now you're seeing all these final plats come through, and so the lots are now hitting the ground and ready to be built. Right, there is a there is a major code change that goes into effect uh, January one. There have been classes for the builders. We do have another class coming up December thirteenth, fourteenth, I believe, day class, seventeenth and eighteenth. I was in the neighborhood, seventeenth and eighteenth, Savannah Rapids. Tell your friends, tell your family, come on out. Talk about all the code changes. So many of these might be an effort to get in under the wire before the new code. Got to have if you have your permit in hand prior to December thirty first, you fall under old code. If you come in January first with your permit, regardless of when you designed, you must meet new code. Do you have any questions? Right. No. Next. Uh, next, you have the building standards budget report. Looking good there. Thank you. Next one you have is a list of all the temporary alcoholic beverage permits that have been issued uh, by Mr. Scarberry and Mr. Johnson last month. Thank you. Next. I'm turning it over. Oh, I'm Scott, there. tell us. Just balancing out the other side of the... Uh, term. Uh, t September 2019 uh, plan review workload measurement monthly report is attached for your um, questions next October 2019 planning department workload measurement monthly report is attached for information questions. thank you is there any other commissioner comment public comment staff comment Seeing none, this committee meeting is adjourned. Thank you.